Hey everyone, welcome. It's been a while since I talked about a set of brakes, but I'm pretty excited to have for you folks this, the Hayes Dominion A4s, the most powerful Hayes brakes that they make today, the four piston. And yes, if you said that it took me six years to get my hands on a set, you would be correct. These were launched in 2018, but at least I managed to get my hands on both the standard A4 series brakes and also the lighter T4 series. Let's see what they are about. Now a four piston brake in 2024 is kind of expected. So how does Hayes differentiate themselves from the likes of Shimano, SRAM, TRP, Magura, you name it? Well, let's take a look at what you get in the box first when you're buying these. It is a standard black box with Dominion clear branding here on the corner. This is the same company though that owns all these brands. You can see Hayes, Manitou, Pro Taper, Sun Ringle. And here in the corner, obviously, you're gonna see meaningful information about what's inside. By the way, these guys are from Wisconsin in USA. And I do have with me two boxes today because there's two variants of these. The A4 bronze rear kit. They have the stealth black and gray. They have this bronze and the purple Oz colors. And down here, I have the T4, the lighter version of the same brakes with carbon liver and titanium hardware. Take them out of the box and you can see the aluminum bronze lever on one and the carbon lever on the other. This carbon variant also has titanium everything. So you have even the bolts to install the caliper. They are made out of titanium. That's a bleed block that's very well thought because you can do it uh, for all four pistons or two at a time. And in here, the user manual pretty much sending you to their website. For the standard brake, you again have the installation bolts for the caliper. You have an extra uh, insert and olive because you might have to cut the hose. Both brakes use the same type of hose, but Hayes does offer a Kevlar version for this. You would use that usually for the rear brake just to minimize the bulging of the brake line. And as a bonus for the standard brake, you are also getting a set of metallic pads. These are the T100 metallic pads for their uh, four piston calipers. And inside here, what we're gonna have, I assume is the semi-metallic, that would be the T106. Levers themselves look very similar aside from the blade. And the attachment point to the bar is very, very similar to the Formula Cura that I'm using on my Tollboy. And if you take a look at their documentation, you're gonna find adapters for both SRAM and Shimano type shifters. That also means that you can install these brakes whichever way you want it, which is very good for people like me that like to use the brakes moto style. You can see the glossy finish here on the master cylinder, which is different from the matte bronze. You have those little dimples here for good grip. Looks like the lever is made to be used with either one or two fingers. Here you have not the bite point adjustment, which is here, but this is the reach adjustment. This is implemented very, very nicely. This is a positive click. Click, click, click is like adjusting your uh, the compression on your suspension. That's how nice it feels. And I'm pretty sure this is forged aluminum, but this uh, blade is actually fairly thick. Definitely thicker than what I've seen on Shimano and Formula Cura. On the light version, you see that carbon blade. This was designed by Reynolds. It looks very similar to what you would get on a Shimano XTR. And otherwise you see here the reservoir uh, cover. You have the mention here that you should be using only DOT inside. And you have a bleed port on each side since you can install these either left or right. And just like with the standard lever, you only have a reach adjustment here is implemented using a little screw or bolt 
I think is a two millimeter. This is almost identical to what Shimano does with their XDRs. Here inside the master cylinder, they have metallic pistons, so they shouldn't have the issues that SRAM has when temperature varies too much. And they also came up with a lot of marketing names for all kind of features. In a nutshell, what they're trying to say is that they want to give us a consistent feel of the lever. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot really adjust the bite point, even though the adjustment is right in here somewhere. Also, they want to provide us with the light movement or light feel of the lever. And just by playing with them here, I can tell you that they feel very nice in my hand. They do that by using a ball bearing right here on the axle itself. And also by lowering the pressure inside the system, which in turn means less friction on the seals. They seem to be very premium and I like the finish as well. All in all, I think they've done a great job with the levers themselves. But what about uh, the calipers? And no, it's not just the fact that, as you can see, that banjo connector comes out in an angle so you can line this nicely with your frame. There's actually a couple other innovations. Let's just call them for what they are, even though the marketing names they chose are somewhat silly. First one is called two stroke dual port bleed and you can see the dual bleed ports here at the end of the caliper. The idea being that you can bleed this with a syringe from here to the master cylinder or between here and here taking all the air out of the caliper first. The second one is you see this uh, pad retaining pin now they call it the king pin. This is fairly big. You would use a three millimeter Allen to remove it. And the idea here is that this is part of the structural resistance of the caliper once installed, making sure that the caliper doesn't flex at all as you ap apply pressure on the pads. Taking the pads out is fairly simple. However, you have to push them from the top. So you'll have to remove the wheel if you wanna take the pads out. Here it goes. This is the 106, like I mentioned. Inside here, you have four 17 millimeter pistons, which is bigger than Shimano four piston is about the same as hope apparently they've modified this little window at the top so it doesn't weaken the caliper overall and lastly and probably my preferred feature is what hayes calls crosshair caliper adjustment these two little grub screws just help you center the caliper better on the disc overall so today in 2024, why don't we have this on all calipers out there? Here is the caliper for the lighter version of these brakes. But if you look carefully inside, you're going to see how the back plate of those semi-metallic uh, pads is actually made out of aluminum. Apparently, they've done that to save even more weight aside from the carbon blade and all the titanium hardware. And by the way, that T4 on the caliper means that this is a four piston version of their caliper. The T2 would be the two piston version of this. So all in all, pretty cool stuff with flashy marketing names. Now, when it comes to weight, and I kept mentioning the light version versus the standard version, these kits that I have are the rear kits, meaning that they come with a 1.8 meter hose. The front kit, comes with a one meter hose that would save about 20, 30 grams, no more. And here's the standard version, uh, 325 grams. That's pretty much the weight of a Dior four piston brake and about 60 or 50 grams heavier than the Formula Cura four pot. As for the light version with a carbon blade, Here's your 279 grams. This is very similar to an XDR four piston. So there you have it, $100 more for XDR like a weight. Which one would you guys pick? 
In my case, I think I would settle for the slightly heavier, cheaper version of the brakes. I think I like the lever shape better as well. Now I got these brakes from Paul at bikecomponents.ca. Make sure you visit his site if you're in need of any mountain biking parts. But the reality is I will not actually be able to ride these brakes to give you my impressions. I will have to settle with my formula brakes that I've been using and loving all this time. However, there's quite a few fellow Canadians that have had the chance to actually ride these brakes. And if you look at their reviews, you're gonna see that the brakes are super powerful as expected and everybody definitely loves the little adjustments that they introduced on the caliper side. Also the bleeding, the additional bleeding ports seem to make a difference as well. If you ask me, I would add the use of the DOT to the cons for these brakes, but otherwise they seem to be a solid, solid option in our marketplace or crowded marketplace for four piston brakes. But I'm curious to hear if you guys are running Hayes brakes, the new Dominions or any old version of the Hayes brakes that have been around. Do you have any questions for me in regards to this? What are you running? Are you running any of the exotic brakes like this Hayes Dominion A4s? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys found this useful and if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers guys, cheers.